So I'm thinking, who did that? So um, it's either a presence or I'm a bit absent-minded, I don't know. The 308's come back and the lovely Miss Stroll's back. So uh, I had a very good trip and both cars got home and it didn't break down. <laughs> well, that's the plan, isn't it? To make sure they won't break down. So yeah, they had a lovely time. And uh, you can tell they've been in France because they left me a stale baguette in it. So there you go. It's, uh, I expect that's from the Carrefour or somewhere. Anyway, I think that's, um, that's either good for a cosh or good for the ducks. I don't know. Right, I'll put this out and then we'll have a look at our, um, what we're supposed to be looking at. We, we've got a, we've got a um, proper Halloween special, a Dino horror story. So I'll get in the blood red... Uh, Maserati and we'll swap it over and look at the horrible Dino. Which is not horrible, but it's had some horrors done to it. This one, don't you? This is our um, big restoration project. Uh, that's the cross member we were looking at in the last video. Uh, this one actually, actually, it's one of the few things that's all right. Obviously, this this um, piece will have to be done. You know, where it joins onto the lower panel that we're looking at, uh, and those those tangs I've got to make for the other one, haven't I? There you go. It's like some sort of Polynesian um, instrument. Anyway, right. Or Indonesian, perhaps. Anyway, the um, yeah, here we go. So it's 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 got a bit of the Frankenstein about it, hasn't it? Like all stitched together. So now we've got it. You know, I did say when we get it back from blasting, and it's all in one uniform colour, it will look better. <laughs> in some ways, it does, but in a lot of ways, it doesn't. So you can see this sort of you know this this thing. So we we've we've cut a plate out. I say we, it's someone else, it's not me. Oh look, see it's moving on its own. It uh, seems to happen here, doesn't it? Things seem to try and take off on their own. Um, right, it's like we've got a presence in here, isn't it? Moving things around. Well that's why I can't find anything, isn't it? Because somebody picks it up and moves it. And then um, I can't find anything. And, um, and I've got no one to blame because I'm working on my own. So I'm thinking, who did that? So um, it's either a presence or I'm a bit absent-minded, I don't know. Anyway, right, so they cut this panel and then they sort of put these little blobs of mick in here <laughs> every now and again <laughs> to just sort of cover up what's under there. And you can see here where they've sort of put these blobs into it. And yeah, it's pretty grim, isn't it? And that's where they, um, they bolt through. Uh, so this side would be the, the, be the steering idler, wouldn't it? So they put the steering idler bolts through there. So they've sort of just sandwiched it over the top and that's it. Um, and then we've got problems in here where, where um, this is one of the issues with these, where, they, where they're made up of different, different uh, bits of metal sort of laminated together, one over the other. It's not, it's not traditionally laminated together. It's not really the right description, but it, it's sort of how they build them up. And then they spot weld through it. And then, of course, what happens, you get, you get corrosion inside it and it all balloons up. But quite often you can't see this because when the engine's in here, you know, the engine comes up to here, the, 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 the lovely Ferrari V6, you know, so you've got one sort of cylinder head here and one cylinder head there. So you don't see that and you never see that. And they'd covered it all up, so you didn't know that was there. So that, that's, um, you know, we knew about this because if you've watched the earlier videos, you know this is what we're going to see, this sort of stuff. That's why I was taking it down to this sort of extent so we could, so we could see what we were going to deal with. So that's one area there. And then if, we, if, we, if I shift it over that way a bit, then we can see it a bit better. And then you remember this was where we had the, um, you know, when we couldn't get the engine out and I had to cut those bits out. I'll get the torch. I think, I think we need a torch, don't we, do? shed some light on the horrors. All the fears of the night go away, don't they, when the sun comes up? <laughs> well, that's what we hope for. There you go. 
although it's going to take more than shining a torch on this to fix it. So yeah, so this is the usual stuff. They're always like this, um, you know, once when they've got the corrosion into them. So, and again, it's because they're all built up with lots of different areas. So you can see, this is just a rust trap. You know, any mud that gets in here will end up in there. And the owner feels that this car was used in a part of Germany during the 1970s where they had some quite severe winters and they were gritting the roads apparently. So I'm convinced that the, the rust happened early in its life when it was used as a daily car and probably used all through the winter and, and the, the, the rust got to it and, you know, and so on. So again, you see, we've got a funny little panelette in here, which is the other side of what we were looking at. So it's not, it's not really adequate, is it? it, it it's, as I said, it survived. Without these type of repairs, this car wouldn't have made it this far along the, you know, it'd have been scrapped. And then it wouldn't be here for me to put it right properly. So that's, you know, that's, that's not be too harsh on them. Um, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. It's probably the best they could do with the money they had or money they were given to do it with. Uh, and they might have been out of their comfort zone or, not to come, the wrong word, out of their depth doing it, you know. But this stuff, I think, was done by somebody else because it, it's a different sort of weld. We're not quite sure if this is gas or not or a very heavy, old-fashioned MIG welder with a very thick wire in it because these welds are quite heavy. But, you know, it's on there, it's strong. And that's say it's, it's survived. And then you've got things like this, all these sort of bits in here. So, you know, we've not got a lot of the original left. Uh, then we had this plate in here, which I cut open to sort of just to see what we had. So obviously I'm gonna to have to deconstruct this area to sort all that out. So there's a huge amount of work in that area, um, which I'm not getting to yet. This is gonna be, this is one of my datums. So I don't wanna cut this area off yet. And then we've got the inner seals, which we were looking at, weren't we? Um, and you're saying that I was making up patterns and so on. Well, this is why we've got nothing here we had those bits they plated over, which I'll grab in a minute, and you'll see we haven't got enough to work with. And that's been replaced, and that's not the right... Sh it's, it's the right shape, but we, don't, we can't trust the dimensions. I don't think the dimensions are quite right. So again, I'm using the other car's reference for this, and then I'm using that information for the future for creating other panels. So, you know, so that's that. And then last week we were looking at this area, weren't we? So we can see it better here now. You see where that flares out? So, so that's where this all kicks up towards the back of the car. Um, because as I explained about how the, how the suspension is different. And then we get into the rear tub area. So, so this would have, this would, so you've got the A post there. And then we were onto the B post here. And we've, we've, we've deconstructed the, the B post because we need to get into other stuff. So that, that goes on there like that. That fits there. So obviously we're replacing this, this area, which we looked at. I've made some of those up already off the, off, off the other cars of datum. I've used that and we made some of these up. Then I've got to make that panel that goes through there. But to, to, this has come off because I've got to do all this. You see where it was all rusty there? All that's got to be rebuilt before I can put it back on. And all the bottom of this is all missing. So I've got to make all that up. And this is the panels that have been let into it over the years to, to try and sort of, you know, keep it, keep it, you know, well, I don't know, <laughs> just to try and keep some strength in it. So they had a couple of welds there holding it on, and then these, they'd bother to fold it at least. But anyway, but that's got to be done. But you can see in here, even in here, we've got to get in here somehow and sort that out. So, you know, you can't buy this stuff. I can't buy one of them. I've got to repair this and reuse it. So that's one of the issues. And then with that off, we can then get to this tub and take this tub off. So there we go. So we've got the tub off. But this tub has had a terrible bit of plating done in here and all this stuff, all very nasty. Um, there's your sort of original metal under there and some of the original paint under there, that original red. But there's not a lot of this. I, I don't know if I'm going to rebuild this or um, I think I'll have to make a new one. I don't know yet. I'm not into that. I've got to, I've got to take it a bit of time on this because otherwise it's just so overwhelming the amount of work that's going to be required that I've got to just do a bit at a time and then we get into this area and we can see all the problems we've got here so again it was all plated up over here so there's your original red color uh, there's a plate in there you know we're just literally taking the plates off to see what to see how much of the originals there you know and then I'll have to re repair as required uh, in a in a better fashion 
But then we've got things like this, where this is, this is the strut that we're looking at. Remember last week we were looking at how, you know, through here you'd get to the, get to the bolts for the hinges, so up through here. Well, um, this one, it's got rust in here. And again, if we come around this side, we'll see why, because it's all delaminated, you know, and got, got rust in between the two bits. Um, delaminated is not really the right term for that, but you know, it's, the, it's, the, it's as I said, it's built up of different sections of metal and they go over each other and they're spot welded through and then, the, and then the rust gets in between and it all balloons out and it goes like that. Common problem on, on Fiat's this era, um, the front wheel drive stuff suffers with it in the back of the, the 128s and 127s and that sort of thing. You'd get, you'd get some of this happening. So these had plates on them which you'll see in the pictures but we've unpicked them and to uncover what's really there so yeah there'll, there'll have to be a degree of deconstruction going on here so i'll have to take these out to rebuild them off the car then refit them to the car having taken repairs in there so if you sort of come around this side and you'll see the daylight shining up you know, if you go up down through there you'll see the daylight shining through it i mean it's just you know <laughs> that's what we're into but this area has a reinforcing goes across there. And again, it's done all this stuff where the rust has got between the two. So that'll have to come up with, with some of this in that, that section. But I'm not touching this side of the car. I'll do that side first, because then I can use this as a datum. So what I'll probably do is I'll build some sort of fixture jig to tie into these so we don't lose the position of it, because obviously we, you know, suspension mounts up to it. Um, so that's our plan, that's our plan, that's sort of loosely what we've got to do. Um, but then if we look at the floor areas, it's actually quite good. We've had these sort of, these, this is, they're, they're all like this. You know, they've always had, they've all had these sort of repairs in the corners of the floor, that's quite common. Uh, this isn't so common, this type of repair, that's a bit nasty. But again, that's, that comes later, because I'm using this as a datum, because I can use, you know, this the door hangs on here. So I don't want to upset any of this until I've done all that. And then I can then start doing that in, in you know, a bit at a time. And again, I'm, I'll have to sort of make sure this doesn't move when I work on this. But that's why you don't take this off yet, because otherwise I lose all reference point. So, yeah, it, it, it will be done in a, in a sort of, um, in an order, as it were. But the floors themselves are actually quite good. You know, I've seen the floors on these far worse. Pretty much these floors are salvageable. You know, there's a little bit we'll do on them, but you know, I've, I've had to replace all four floors before on cars like this. Um, so again, I think, I think it was used in the salt. The salt all went up through this area and it's rotted everything out on its way, you know, where, where it splashed up. But the middle of the car seemed to salvage, seemed to stay all right. Um, and other ones I've seen with, because they're spiders, quite often the roof leaks and it leaks, you know, the, 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 it rots from the inside out because it fills up with water. But this isn't like that. Um, but as I said before, when we were inspecting it, there's some funny things like these different seat mounts on here. So they've got some different, different holes here. So it must have had some different seats in it at one point. It's got these things welded in. Well, we'll get rid of them and put it right. Uh, and then you can see this is where we've got to do repairs. So I'm not sure whether I'll replace this or do repairs yet. You know, I'll, I'll, take a, I'll take a view on that as we go. Um, it certainly needs repairs, but you know, that I'll have to do them in a nice way um, so they're invisible. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. Now, I think if you look at the older videos, you'll see about all these boxing plates they'd made and the one where it had two boxing plates on it, they'd put one in that was too thin and then built and put another one on top of it. Um, and how the outer seals looked and so on. Um, but I'll grab them because they're only outside and we'll have another look at it to refresh your memory. So, that was our outer seal for this side. And um, you can see here it wasn't, it was galvanised and then they wax oiled it, so it wasn't going to rust again. But they didn't really weld it on very well, all these just little tiny little blobs of weld on the bottom. And it was completely the wrong shape. If you look at the first video in the, in the Dino series, you see me in, doing the inspection and talking about how they're the wrong shape. So I'm, I'm convinced because they're the wrong shape that we're going to have issues, which obviously we did have. And there, so this is what we found. We had, we had the boxing plate, which is that one that's supposed to have all the holes and the swages in it. Well, 
we got in there and we had that one in there and you can see how it goes up onto this this what's left of that which is that thing that i say becomes the datum and say so you need to watch the video before this to understand this construction and here's all the little welds where it's welded on you know not very good really um galvanized heavy galvanized bit of steel um you know quite nice bit of steel but not really used in the right way but when that come off behind it was this another bit of galvanized steel but you can see this is all very floppy thin stuff so they welded that on and then obviously thought better of it and put another one on but the other side was just one of the right sort of gauge so obviously they built up sort of to it slowly they um you know, I had to think about it, sort of thing. Um, so, something for the scrap man, isn't it? I keep anything original. Original panels I try and keep, because original panels I keep for, you know, for datums and, and so on to refer back to and, and, and so on, but that's just junk that can go in the bin. Um, I don't even want to keep them just for the horror story side of it because I think it's uh, <laughs> it'll creep people out, won't it? Showing them that. <laughs> so um, yes. So my recommendation for spooky films this weekend. I tell you what I watched the other night, which I loved, was um, the Vast of the Night. That was a great film. Um, and watch out for the amazing tracking shot in it. Very much like um, the beginning of Touch of Evil. And there's a great little YouTube film um, about how they made it and that particular tracking shot, which is really interesting. And then if you look at how they did the tracking shot in Touch of Evil, which is another one of my favourite films, uh, Orson Welles, um, uh, Charlton Heston, um, I can't remember who else is in it. Anyway, I'm not going to wobble on about that. You'll have to look it up. Um, both of those films have these remarkable tracking, tracking shots in them. Um, and The Vast of the Night had a lovely sort of feel to it and, and nice music, nice sort of soundtrack and stuff. And uh, very much a um, Twilight Zone homage sort of thing. Um, so not, not traditionally, not monster movies, not scary. It's not, not one of those stupid films that kids watch to scare themselves. You know, it's actually, it's quite nice, but it's got a nice sort of, yeah, sort of, sort of atmosphere to it. Um, and it's set in the 50s and it's lovely. It's a, it's, it's a nice thing, I like it. Um, uh, what was I going to say about it? But yeah, this sort of tracking shot also has a sort of feel of, a feel of the sort of the tricycle in, 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 in The Shining, you know, it sort of moves like that. But yeah, if you, if you watch the film, and then if you're into cinema, you, if, you, if you then watch this YouTube film about how they did that, it's actually, it's, it's quite surprising and it's, 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 it's brilliant, you know, it's, it's, it's illuminating. And then if you then look at it on, you should be able to, there must be some things about Touch of Evil and that famous shot in that. Uh, and then look up that and you can see what, you know, sort of, um, you know, 70 years of progress has brought you. It still takes the human imagination to create anything and that's all it is it's imagination and how can we make this do that and they must have talked about it they don't talk about it in the thing they don't give the secrets away of um of what inspired them but that's what it will be it'll be touch of evil definitely um and it, yeah and and yeah anyway enough of that um so yeah that's my um that's that's my uh, latest um sort of uh, crush as it comes to films is is, is uh, vast of the night um, and I think um, that'll do. <laughs> I say scare yourself sentences, you won't watch that. It's a very, very nice little gentle film really, but it's, it's got a nice little spookiness to it. So uh, it, it's uh, not traditionally a uh, Halloween-y thing, but I, I think it's got a, got a good, um, I quite liked it. I sort of had a good atmosphere to it, good, good uh, feel. Um, and there you are. So, um, your thing to do is turn all the lights off, isn't it? So, they, so the trick-or-treaters know now you're in. <laughs> and watch the vast of the night. <laughs>